is Earth. Kind of a nice place so far. Nice buildings, beautiful trees, uh, nice humanoids. Yeah. 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 Mm. You know, after so many interstellar years, I am starving. I need some food. I'm hungry. Mm, Orbitus, you are always hungry. It is disgusting. Wait, what is that up ahead? Mm. I do believe my enlarged nose smells food. Hey you! Who are you? And what are you doing on our communion table? Who? Me? Well, it looked like food. And I am hungry. Wow, you guys look vaguely familiar to me. Do I know you? Have we met? Greetings, Earthling. I am Zipsor, Celestial Pioneer from the Galaxy Kryptonium. And this is my co pilot, Orbitus. <laughs> we have come across many miles go and right. many galaxies. <laughs> okay. Earthlings are strange people. Indeed. Indeed. We bring you greetings in the name of the Kryptonian people. This is not how we practice this. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. 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 Oh man, Very this is intense. way off script. Thanks. It's way off script. <laughs> well, uh, good to meet you, I guess. Welcome to Earth, and welcome to E-Town Church of the Brethren. Thank we you. We practice peace, service, and openness to all. <laughs> we appreciate it. <laughs> we are very glad to be here. Now, about the food. Hey. Whoa. <laughs> what are you doing? You're not supposed to touch that. That's for communion. Communion? Morbidus, listen to them. I, it may be poisonous. No, I thought it was no, a no, 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 protein no, no. pod, perhaps. This, this is, it's communion bread. It's communion bread. You can't just eat communion bread. Oh, you can watch me eat communion no, bread. I <laughs> it, it is poisonous. It is poisonous. <laughs> that is your line, Earthling. <laughs> really? <laughs> of course it's not poisonous. It's just special. Ah, uh, I see. It is magic bread. <laughs> what does it do? What special powers does it give? Does it make you invisible? No, oh, it's not magic. It's just special. It belongs to Jesus, and we share it with everyone. Everyone? You mean all of these humanoids? Well, it had better be pretty filling because there is not that much there. You know, you don't eat communion bread because you're hungry in the stomach. You eat communion bread because you're hungry in the soul. The hungry soul. The soul. What is that of which you speak? I think we better start from the beginning, Pam. Well, I think we better start from the beginning, Anna. <laughs> All right, all right, in the beginning, there was a man, he was mostly a man, he was also the son of God, and he came to the earth more than 2,000 years ago, that's a lot of light years away. Indeed. What planet was he from? Maybe we know him. <laughs> he wasn't from outer space, he was from heaven, from God. Did he get Jesus. to eat the bread? <laughs> he invented communion. Ah, chef. Oh, no, 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 not really a chef. A teacher, a prophet, a leader. Jesus was sent by God to teach us God's ways here on earth. He lived for about 30 years, and during that time, he taught the people around him how to live in peace, 
how to love one another, and how to follow God. He also performed some pretty spectacular healings and miracles. Yes, but some people didn't like what Jesus had to say, and they killed, plotted against him. They had him arrested and tried and killed, and they crucified him on a cross. Mm, this is a sad story. It is oh, indeed. But there's a happy ending. After he died, Jesus came back to life. God resurrected him to prove once and for all that good triumphs over evil, and God won't stop loving us no matter what. So that is where the bread comes in, bringing people back to life? Mm -hmm. Well, on the last night with his followers, before his arrest and crucifixion, they all sat down to dinner together. Oh, dinner, yeah. I'm listening now. <laughs> <laughs> well, after they had eaten the meal, Jesus picked up the bread and he broke it. And he gave them each a piece and he told them, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Cannibals. They are cannibals. <laughs> cannibals. They are cannibals. No, cannibals. This, is symbolic. this is just bread. Keep going. Okay, all right. <laughs> then he picked up the cup of wine and he told them, This is my blood shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Please tell us that is symbolic as well. <laughs> yes, it's symbolic. The bread and the cup at the communion table remind us of Jesus and we eat them to remember him. We retell the story of his life, death, and resurrection, and remember him with the bread and wine. Or grape juice. Right, or grape juice. Yeah. Grape juice. Mm. Mm. Well, originally, <laughs> I, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> some churches, like ours, use grape juice so that kids and adults don't, who don't want to have alcohol can have something else to share. They're both made from grapes, so it's close. May I please have both? Mm. Bread and mm. grape juice? Mm. No. No? Please tell me, does everyone who follows Jesus participate in communion? Sure. People who follow Jesus are called Christians, and Christians all over the world celebrate communion. And everyone has the same bread and the same juice? Well, not exactly. Different people in different parts of the world have different kinds of bread. Some even have these special wafers. We have some pretty special wafers. But you use just whatever bread it is that you have in your part of the world. Remember, this is purely symbolic. And some have only wine, others only grape juice, some both. People serve it in different ways, too. Some people break off pieces of one loaf and drink out of the same cup. Others have lots of little pieces and little cups. Some of them break off the bread and dip it into the cup. It just depends. Interesting. Interesting. So you can choose to remember Jesus with bread and cup in many different ways. Exactly. <laughs> well, I would like to know what happened to dinner. First you said there was dinner, now there is no dinner. <laughs> with Jesus and his original followers, there was a dinner. And in the early days of the church, they continued the tradition of having a dinner. We brethren still celebrate love feasts, which reenacts the Last Supper. We'll celebrate love feasts just before Easter, in the spring. What a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we still do eat together. We've got some fellowship dinners come up where we'll eat at round tables. There'll be lots of good food, including casserole and cookies. Cookies! <laughs> yeah. Some good stuff. Zips or cookies. Good cooks in this congregation. You know, we would love to have you guys join us anytime. And this morning, what we'd really like to do is if you'll join us and have communion with us. We would be honored to join you. Learn more about this Jesus character, we must. Anyone and everyone is welcome to share the meal so long as they have a genuine desire to know Jesus in their lives. So let's have a seat and share communion. Hey everyone, it's me, Pastor Greg. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I was given the task of turning the corner here as we move from interstellar communion and we think about Worldwide Communion Sunday. As we mentioned before, people across the globe have been celebrating communion today, and I like to 
think about it, this, this image popped into my mind. You know these images where we see the earth, this gentle blue giant spinning in space, and the sun is coming up and the perspective is from outer space. And you see the sun rising and you see the earth gently turning. And I think 15 hours ago, there were people in the Pacific Islands who woke up, went to worship, and had communion. And then as our globe continued to spin, then people in New Zealand and Japan and Malaysia and Australia did the same. And then China, Southeast Asia, people in India eating bread, not unlike that that we see up here. Then some of our oldest Christian traditions in the Middle East and Africa and Europe. And still the earth keeps spinning, and here we are on the verge of celebrating this important ritual together. People around the world have done it. We are about to do it. And then, of course, our friends to the West will do it later in the day. Across the globe, different kinds of breads, sometimes in some of these rituals, the priest has taken the bread away from and put it in someone's mouth. Other times they've taken the bread, leavened, and broken it. Some have taken unleavened bread like we have here. And do like we do, and we'll do in a few minutes, and break it together. Some have had wine, others have had grape juice, others have had water because that's all they have. Yet the symbolism remains the same. This is, import, this is an important and vital act in our faith tradition. And so we continue it. And I wonder if an alien came and visited you this afternoon, or maybe even just a friend or family member, and they said, what is this communion all about? Why did you do that in church this morning? What would you say? Would you say that it's about forgiveness? Certainly could. Would you say that it's about service? It's about remembering what Jesus has done. Jesus who is willing to go to the very end for us. Certainly. Would we say it's about gathering around a table, symbolic or otherwise, and sharing the nourishment of life together? Absolutely. It's all these things and it's more. And so as we enter into a time of communion now, I invite you to think about what this means to you. And if you happen to have one of those children sitting next to you from the children's story, share with them what it means to you as well. Deacons, please come and serve us.